Today we're talking about life cycles, and this is awesome because it is our final science mini lesson of the school year. So life cycles are the stages or sequence of events where an organism grows, changes, reproduces, and dies. And all living things have life cycles. We're just going to talk about a couple examples, but every living thing has a life cycle. So here's our human life cycle. If you think about it, you know that we're born as a baby and we grow to be a child and a teenager and an adult and an older adult, and then we die. So that's just, we go through general stages. And humans and mammals, they look just like their parents, just smaller. So we're going through gradual changes, but that's not always the case. So insects and amphibians, amphibians, remember being like frogs, um, go through metamorphosis, but plants and animals don't. They just go through gradual stages of growth. So when we're talking about insects and amphibians, we'll talk about two different types of metamorphosis, complete and incomplete. So complete metamorphosis would be where there's like really big changes um, like when you think about a butterfly going through metamorphosis, um, in these insects' life cycle, they are literally, like, they look like completely different things. Think about a frog or a tadpole or a caterpillar and a ladybug. And they're going in a, a chrysalis usually and turning into another animal. Um, incomplete metamorphosis is where you're still like molting and changing and there are different phases, but they're smaller changes that look similar um, to each other. So like a nymph and an adult are gonna look similar, um, but slightly different. So let's talk about insects. Here's our first example, cricket, and grasshoppers are very similar. So both of these animals, crickets and grasshoppers, or insects, I mean, are, start out as an egg and then hatch into a nymph, which is kind of just like a baby cricket or a young cricket. Um, and then they will molt and shed its exoskeleton or its shell, and that's how it grows. So as it gets bigger, it, it sheds its exoskeleton so that it has a bigger one and can fit in and just does that until it's fully grown into an adult. And while the, the actual cricket is growing, the wings are also growing. A beetle, on the other hand, has a four stage life cycle. Starts out as an egg and then hatches into a tiny larva, um, which is kind of gross but cool. Science has a lot of things that are gross but cool, I feel like. Larva could also be called a mealworm, and um, it's just a weird little worm thing, baby. Then it starts the pupa part of its life cycle, and a pupa is the same thing as like when a butterfly, or I mean when a caterpillar makes a, the chrysalis and like goes into its little protective case. That's the same as the pupa life cycle, okay? Pupa and chrysalis are synonyms so it wraps itself up and then when it comes out it comes out as an adult so beetles will do that but what's crazy is where like a human life cycle would last 90 years or something an adult beetle may live for several weeks or months and then it just has eggs to you know continue to reproduce and then just dies so the life cycle altogether is a lot shorter for insects than it would be for like mammals. Here's a radish, which is an example of a plant life cycle. So a plant starts out as a little seed and grows into a seedling or sprout. Um, and it's just a little baby plant there that grows out of the seed. It looks similar though, because we know animals and plants have gradual growth rather than metamorphosis. So the seedling will just keep growing until it matures into an adult, 
the adult plant or the radish will grow flowers and those flowers have seeds and the seeds will will become the new radish plants and so that's how the life cycle continues and then the mature plant may eventually die radish so another plant life cycle that's similar um, would be the lima bean so it also starts as a seed but what's different about a lima bean and a radish is that the lima bean plant has a bean like around the seed okay so the the bean is like keeping the seed safe but it also plants want animals to eat their their beans in this case because that way they'll eat the seeds and spread them around and then we'll have more lima beans so when the lima bean is watered right we plant it our little seed or little bean and the seed will spill out as it starts to grow and we'll have a cute little seedling or a sprout and then just like the radish it will gradually grow into an adult plant a mature plant and instead of flowers it will grow beans and the seeds will be inside the beans yada yada we plant the beans we get more lima beans okay so now that we've gone over a couple examples and we've talked about how some animals go through or plants and animals do have gradual changes and insects and amphibians could either have complete or incomplete metamorphosis let's answer some questions the life cycle of a tomato plant is illustrated here so a emerges from soil produces first leaves b grows taller produces more leaves c has flowers and fruit produces seeds d gets buried in soil grows into new plant which stage in the diagram is the adult plant so where is it a mature plant okay well these look like seeds to me i know that's the beginning of a plant's life um and then i know the mature plant is going to produce seeds so that we can make more plants and it's also just going to be the biggest so i'm going to go with c for the adult tomato plant Number two, all life cycles, whether they are plant or animal life cycles, include growth and change, the spreading of seeds, larva and pupa stages, or giving milk to young. All right, so I'm going to annotate my problem. We're talking about plant or animal life cycles. I know that means we have gradual changes. And I'm going to abbreviate this because it's so hard to write on this. And you can't even read it anyway. Okay, so gradual changes. Do plants and animals both grow and change? Yes. So I'm going to write P slash A, plant and animal. Okay, and I'm going to put a dot next to that because I think that's true. B, the spreading of seeds. Plants have seeds but animals do not so i'm going to cross that out larva and pupa stages hmm larva and pupa sounds like insects to me insect so i'm going to cross that out because we're just talking about plant or animal life cycles and then lastly give milk to young Okay, this is something that mammals do, that animals do, but plants do not. So I'm going to cross it out and circle A. Three, plants have flowers so they can reproduce. Therefore, when a plant has flowers, we know that the plant blank. Okay, so if I think about a cute little plant, here's my flower. Okay, this flower is going to attract bees, it's going to have little seeds in it, and it's going to be pollinated, and so the bees will take that pollen, 
and make more flowers, right? So reproduce means to make more flowers. So a plant has flowers. We know that the plant does not need insects to feed on it. Well, I was just talking about how bees need to pollinate this little, this maybe little bee, need to pollinate this flower. So that doesn't seem true. Um, and I'm going to draw an arrow to my bee. Live in a warm, moist climate. Um, we're not talking about climate at all. So I'm going to put a question mark. Has reached the adult stage. I know that a flower is going to start as a seed and turn into like a little sprout and then become a mature plant. So a mature plant would have flowers. That seems pretty good. And I'm going to draw a little arrow to my life cycle is not able to produce seeds. The flowers are so that we can have the seeds and attract bees. So I'm gonna cross that one out and I am going to circle C. Four, the images here show the life cycles of a cockroach and a darkling beetle. Okay, so our cockroach life cycle, adult, oh wait, I don't want to start there. Egg case, gross. Nymph, gross. Adult, gross. Okay, so we've got three stages. I see that the uh, nymph and the adult both look very similar. Um, there's not a drastic change between the, the nymph and the adult. So I'm going to write incomplete. And then I'm just going to write M, incomplete metamorphosis. Now let's look at this beetle's life cycle. Uh, okay, we've got some eggs. Then we've got like a little worm, a larva. Then we've got, this looks like a little um, protective case, a pupa. And all of these pictures look very different. And then we've got an adult beetle. So I can see that because this beetle goes from larva, pupa to adult, this is a complete metamorphosis. Okay, now that I've annotated my pictures, I'm going to look at the question. In the cockroach life cycle, the nymph is the stage that emerges from the egg. Okay, so we go from egg to nymph. True. In this cycle, it is similar to what to which stage of the darkling beetle life cycle. So the nymph is the stage after the egg, which stage is similar for the cockroach. So if I look over here, what's the stage after the egg? Well, I can see it's the larva. So the answer would be C. It's kind of a tricky question. Last question, exit ticket, here we go. How is the life cycle of a beetle similar to the life cycle of a frog? Both life cycles, A, include a tadpole stage, B, produce adults with wings, C, take place in the water, D, begin with an egg. Pause here, play for the answer. This is actually a pretty tough exit ticket. Um, but I drew my frog life cycle going from egg to tadpole, tadpole with legs to frog, and then my beetle goes from egg, larva, pupa, adult, and I defined them. Includes a tadpole stage, just frog, produce adult with wings, beetle takes place in water. I know what frog does. Honestly, I'm not sure where beetles lay their eggs. Or D begins with eggs. Well, I know for sure, no doubt about it, that both of these begin with eggs. So the correct answer is D.